All right, all right. Coming to the end of chapter 13. This is chapter 13, section four. Comparing performance loop versus iterators. Close that. To determine whether to use loops or iterators, you need to know which version of our search function is faster. The version with an explicit for loop or the version with iterators. We ran a benchmark by loading the entire contents of The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle into a string and looking for the word the in the contents. Here are the results of the benchmark on the version of search using the for loop and the version using iterators. All right, so basically what they're going over here is which one is faster, using iterators or using a for loop? And these numbers, the first one I believe is for loop and the second one should be iterator. The iterator is slightly faster. And that's what they say, okay, cool. The iterator version was slightly faster. We won't explain the benchmark code here because the point is not to prove that the two versions are equivalent, but to get a general sense of how these two implementations compare performance wise. For a more comprehensive benchmark, you should check using various texts of various sizes as the contents, different words and different words of different lengths as the query, and all kinds of other variations. The point is this, iterators, although a high level abstraction, get compiled down to roughly the same code as if you'd written the lower level code yourself. Iterators are one of Rust's zero cost abstractions, by which we mean using the abstraction imposes no additional runtime overhead. This is analogous to how, don't know how to say this word, um, sorry if I butcher your name, but Bjarne, B is probably silent, Bjarne Strawstruck, the original designer and an implementer of C++, defines zero overhead in Foundations of C++, 2012. In general, C++ implementations obey the zero overhead principle. What you don't use, you don't pay for. And further, what you do use, you couldn't hand code any better. Okay, okay. As another example, the following code is taken from the audio decoder. The decoding algorithm uses the linear prediction mathematical operation to estimate future values based on a linear function of the previous samples. This code uses an iterator chain to do some of the math on three variables in scope, a buffer, slice of data, an array of 12 coefficients, and an amount by which to shift data in QLP underscore shift. We've declared the variables within this example, but not giving them any values. Although this code doesn't have much meaning outside of its context, it's still a concise real world example of how Rust translates high level ideas into low level code. Um, okay, so this example is an audio decoder and they don't expect us to understand this, but they do expect us to look at how iterators are being used and let's let's see how they're being used we have the buffer which they mentioned we have the coefficients which they mentioned and we have the shift thingy these are things that are being defined so the buffer you're doing a for loop over the buffer and then we have the prediction which looks like to be an array okay we're going to iterate over it. After that, we while iterating, we zip buffer i minus 12 dot 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 i. Hold on. So i is here. Let's say i is 0. 0 minus 12 dot 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 i. We're zipping all of the contents for the current item that we're iterating with, with the rest of them. OK. And then we're doing a map, which takes those two things and multiplies them. And then we're doing a summation, 
I have no idea what that does. The, the two arrow things into this shift thing. And then after that, we have the delta, which is the buffer at I, which is the thing we're acting on, seemingly. Buffer at I equals prediction, as in I32 plus the delta. Ooh, that's convoluted. To be clear, I don't know the specifics of what's going on, but we do get to see how iterators are at each and every step of this. And they have broken down things in terms of logically. So we have a for loop, but for each for loop, we're doing an entire iteration from seemingly close to the beginning of the buffer. Coefficients, hopefully that's a size. I'm not sure if that's a maximum, maybe 12, I don't know. Items in it, possibly. Mm. Yeah, let's see what they say. To calculate the value of prediction, this code iterates through each of the 12 values and coefficients and uses the zip method to pair the coefficient values with the previous 12 values in buffer. Okay, I got that part right. Then, for each pair, we multiply the values together, sum all of the results, and shift the bits in the sum, the QLP underscore shift, bits to the right. Ah, uh, so this operation, this arrow arrow thing is a bit shift. I'm not great with bit shifts. I, I never use them because I don't understand them, but okay. Calculations in applications like audio decoders often prioritize performance most highly. Here we're creating an iterator using two adapters and then consuming the value. What assembly code would this Rust code compile to? Well, as of this writing, it compiles down to the same assembly you would write by hand. There's no loop at all corresponding to the iteration over the values in coefficients. Rust knows that there are 12 iterations, so it unrolls the loop. Unrolling is an optimization that removes the overhead of the loop controlling code and instead generates repetitive code for each iteration of the loop. Okay, um, that's the first time I'm hearing of this. So they're saying when the Rust compiles down, it uses this thing called unroll, uh, unrolls, uh, unrolling. And the concept of that is the, hold on, it's an optimization that removes the overhead of the looping, of the loop controlling the code and instead generates repetitive code for each iteration of the loop. I see. So in theory, that means that this for loop since they know it's only going to be of size 12, gets broken down to repetitive code that just happens on each of those indices and not necessarily a for loop. So they kind of just take the looping out of the and then write it explicitly. At least that's my understanding of it. Okay. All of the coefficients get stored in registers, which means accessing the value is very fast. There are no bound checks on the array access at runtime. All these optimizations that Rust is able to apply makes the resulting code extremely efficient. Now that you know this, you can use iterators and closes without fear. They make code seem like it's higher level, but don't impose a runtime performance penalty for doing so. Okay, so all of that was to tell us that iterators don't put any overhead costs on using them. You can use them freely without worrying about performance. Got it. Summary. Closures and iterators are Rust features inspired by functional programming language ideas. They contribute to Rust's capability to clearly express high-level ideas at low-level performance. The implementations of closures and iterators are such that runtime performance is not affected. This is part of Rust's goal to strive to provide zero-cost abstractions. Now that we've improved the expressiveness of our IO project, let's look at some more features of Cargo that will help us share the project with the world. Cool. So um, yeah, uh, the next section seemingly is going over Cargo and publishing crates, I'm guessing. Uh, with that being said, if you like the video, subscribe. Outside of that, peace.